It gives me great pleasure to welcome to the conference His Excellency Mr. Palaviel Govida Sami, Minister of Natural Resources and Environment of Malaysia. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Climate change is a defining issue of our times, and we need bold and brave action today to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and to build resilience in terms of mitigation efforts. The fifth assessment report of the inter Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change makes it clear that adaptation needs will increase in the coming years. And as a consequence, adaptation costs for all countries will continue to mount. Malaysia has adopted and begun implementing the national policy on climate change and the national green technology policy. We have implemented the Renewable Energy Act since 2011 with a feed-in tariff mechanism to scale up renewable energy development in Malaysia. We have formulated the national water resources policy to integrate mitigation adaptation efforts into water resource management and developed a roadmap to identify potential mitigation options up to 2030. We also have gazetted new forest reserves, demonstrating Malaysia's commitment to a pledge made 22 years ago at the Rio Earth Summit. With the seven decisions adopted on REDD Plus at Warsaw, I am pleased to inform that Malaysia has submitted the reference level for technical assessment in the context of results-based payments at the REDD Plus Day, organized by the Government of Peru and UNFCCC. This is the first step Malaysia is taking towards implementing REDD Plus. The reference level was developed with limited national funds, and we are committed to reducing emissions from forestry activities. We are earnest in tackling issues related to climate change and can do even more if the means of implementation in the form of climate finance, technology transfer, and capacity building are scaled up. As announced recently by our Prime Minister during the Climate Summit in New York in 2014, we have successfully reduced Malaysia's carbon emission intensity by 33% and we are on track to achieve our target of a 40% reduction in carbon intensity by 2020. Malaysia has shown that our economy can grow while our emissions intensity falls. However, this has been accomplished without requisite finance and technology transfer from developed countries as obligated under the Convention. This has forced Malaysia to allocate finite national resources between poverty eradication sustainable development and environmental protection and adaptation and mitigation efforts. Climate change adaptation is becoming a major expense item. Malaysia has spent nearly 2.6 billion US dollars in the last decade in tackling the incidence of more frequent floods. These are resources that we could have invested in green industries or used to slow the rate of climate change. In so far as our nationally determined contributions are concerned, Malaysia takes a comprehensive approach, fully in accordance with the principles, provisions, and annexes of the Convention, which addresses all elements identified in decision, namely adaptation, mitigation, finance, technology development and transfer, capacity building, and transparency of actions and support. Malaysia reiterates the necessity for prioritizing Adaption, adaptation along with the necessity for further clarity and ambition in the provisions of the means of implementing for both adaptation and mitigation in order to enable parties such as Malaysia to make a rational and forward-looking contribution to the 2015 agreement. Thank you very much. I would like to thank His Excellency for his statement.